All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Eric here from Moss Pond. If you're like me, you're probably wondering what happens in a real handgun fight? What happens when bullets go through barriers? I mean, there's never a perfect situation. You know, when you're at the range, you're shooting at paper, there's no type of stress involved, there's no type of real world scenario. What happens when bullets pass through auto glass, when they pass through drywall, when they pass through, you know, uh, two by fours and all these odd building materials that people don't factor into ballistics gel testing or, or really any type of ammo testing. Well, we're gonna try to find that out today. Um, we've got some really, really cool stuff planned with a variety of different 45 ACP handgun uh, cartridges. But before we get started, I've got a new Lehigh 300 blackout load. Now, kind of in the end of this whole, you know, situation, people worry about over penetration. They worry about, you know, around having the, the ability to do the job in any situation, but not over penetrate and cause collateral damage. Well, that's what Lehigh has done with this little 78 grain screamer. Now, this is a, a very new load. They don't even have a name for it yet. So why don't you guys leave your comments in the suggestion box below and tell me what you would name that scary looking little round. Okay, it's got an aluminum core and it's got uh, pedals that break apart and dumps all of its energy. Check this out. Here we go. Oh wow, <laughs> that looked pretty impressive. Let's check out the slow-mo. All right guys, in the slow-mo shot, we can see some really amazing things going on. When that water jug took that shot, it, it kind of did the Kennedy head effect, you know, with everything kind of going backwards after it, you know, got shot. Uh, the meat, of course, very, very nasty looking pink mist there with the meat. And of course the ballistic shell, we got pretty good bit of pass through. Uh, I can really see that this round's gonna have a lot of potential for close quarters combat and for reduced collateral damage. Uh, let's move on with our windshield test. This is going to be an awesome day. Let's get after it. All right, guys, if you're anything like me, you probably wonder what happens when a bullet goes through auto glass. Well, auto glass is not like other types of glass. It's a safety glass. It has a laminate construction uh, in terms of the coating on it that keeps the glass together. If it gets cracked, it keeps it from shattering into a million pieces. Now, you always see in movies and stuff where, you know, the bad guys, good guys, they shoot at each other, they shoot through glass. So the whole point of this is we want to see what happens when a projectile actually goes through the glass and if it'll, it'll pass straight through, straight line penetration, and hit our ballistic shell block back there. Now, the round that I'm going to start off with is a plus P 200 grain Lehigh Defense Extreme Penetrator. All right, now they don't call it Extreme Penetrator for nothing. This thing is designed to do exactly what we're about to do. Uh, this round is moving at 950 feet per second, it's coming out of a four inch barrel Smith & Wesson m &P, uh, compact, 45 ACP. Let's give her a try. All right, oh wow. <laughs> Man, they don't call it that for nothing. All right guys, so right out the gate, pretty much the result I expected to see. I mean, that extreme penetrator is designed to penetrate. All right, it's designed to go through barriers, which we're going to showcase a little more here in a moment. But the auto safety glass did its job. It stayed together just like it was supposed to do. Uh, we got straight line penetration for the most part right through this block. The round did try to skewer a little bit and go out the exit, uh, exit the side of the gelatin, but it didn't. Um, we did end up getting about a two inch permanent cavity uh, right at the entry level into about the first four inches of gelatin. Now that is a solid projectile. It stays together, retains all of its weight, doesn't deform. So we're gonna move on to showcase a couple of different offerings, uh, not only from Lehigh, but from a couple of other companies as well, just to see how it fares in this same uh, uh, experiment. So let's go ahead and give that a try. All right, guys, we're gonna perform the same test. We got the same size block of gelatin, same distance, we're roughly about seven yards away. All right, we got our windshield, ballistic gelatin. We're gonna shoot Federal HST 230 grain. Pretty good little carry load, but I want to see how it stacks up in this test. Let's do it. Same gun. All right, let's have a look. All right, guys, well, the Federal HST round went through the glass, just like the rest of them. Uh, favor just slightly low in the ballistic shell. It looks like it might have actually even bounced up a little bit. Um, let's have a look. I think we captured it here. Looks like we got a pretty good bit of uh, deformation on that projectile. A lot of deformation on the way in with the glass, uh, but it seems like it held together, penetrated quite well. But you can tell it certainly didn't do what it was designed to do in terms of being a penetrating bullet, in terms of being a hollow point bullet that is designed to expand and retain weight and everything like that. All right, guys, so that test didn't go too bad for the uh, uh, Federal HST. We're gonna shoot the Hornady Critical Duty 
And it's their 220 grain flex lock. It's a plus P round moving at 990 feet per second. And this is one of the rounds that Hornady touts as being a uh, barrier blind projectile. So let's give it a try. Same gun. And I think I'm figuring out why the rounds are hitting slightly low. Um, when they're hitting the glass, they actually skewer downward. So I'm going to try to give myself about another couple of inches worth of uh, elevation so that maybe that round will just dip right in, right in the gel where we want to see it. So here we go. In three, two, one. All right, guys, again, auto glass did its job. Ballistics gel, this time we actually got a really good center shot. I did favor slightly higher uh, to compensate for the glass deflecting the bullet downward. We can see that the projectile actually did lose some weight going through the block. We lost our polymer tip, which is of course normal. That tip is there to upset that cavity and make it move around. It bounced against our blue jean material and our projectile ended up right there. But we got a lot of deformation with that projectile. But it punched on through and did its job for the most part. All right, guys, well, so far we're getting the result that we want to see in terms of seeing what happens when, from a practical standpoint, when projectiles go through auto glass. But one thing I want to mention is that not all rounds are created equal. You know, some rounds are designed to be barrier blind. Other rounds are designed to not have a lot of pass through. Other rounds are designed to be a little bit more frangible and break up into multiple pieces uh, than others. All right, well, the round that we're going to shoot right now is the control fracturing. It's 170 grains moving at 1,000 feet per second plus P category, of uh, same gun. Now, this is the round that has the three pedals that goes off and creates their own wound channels, and then the base carries on through. So this is not designed to penetrate barriers, but just for, you know, giggles here, let's see what happens. In three, two, one. All right, guys. Well, I have to uh, admit that I'm, I'm pretty surprised at what this round did. This particular round is not designed to do this, all right? Usually what happens with this particular one, you know, we had our pass through through the windshield, all right? We got relatively straight line penetration through the ballistic shell block. We got good permanent cavity, nice punch through. Now, of course, the pellets didn't break off and create their own wound channels, because why would they? Because actually the projectile got carried right here, and you can see that the pedals actually tried to sort of close up and that's a common occurrence when you're talking about a hollow point. Usually hollow point rounds, uh, that's why they test them with denim and that's why they test them with barriers because generally those barriers will fill the cavity up and once the projectile actually gets through to the intended target, it's not going to have you know, the proper uh, hydraulic uh, potential that it needs for that cavity to open up and the bullet do what it's designed to do. But we did get here a round that held 100% uh, weight retention. It still gave a good uh, permanent cavity, and the uh, temporal cavity looked pretty scary on that too in the slow-mo footage. And we got good straight line penetration, over 16 inches. So that means that if you shot this through a barrier, you'd still penetrate, you'd still defeat the barrier, or if you hit a soft tissue uh, target, this thing would be absolutely devastating. So that's pretty impressive there. I wasn't expecting that result. We are going to move on to one more load I wanna try out, and we're gonna move on to some different barriers. Uh, we've been shooting auto glass, but then we're going to move on to some, uh, you know, sheetrock, um, plywood, things like that. All right, guys, one last round we're going to shoot into the uh, glass here is going to be the maximum expansion round from Lehigh. Now, this particular bullet is a lot different, okay? This is designed for a lot less pass-through, all right? What this does is it goes into an assailant, it expands into this crazy ninja star looking thing. I know you guys have seen them before. And what that does is it prevents over penetration. Now, this is not designed for penetrating barriers. This is designed for if you need to stop an assailant but not have pass through that's gonna you know, have an increased risk of collateral damage. This is good if you're in a crowded environment where you wanna put a bad guy down but not hurt anyone around you with a lot of pass through, all right? So let's try it out. This particular loading's moving at 1,000 feet per second. It weighs 174 grains. In three, two, one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that did the trick. <laughs> Let's go see what it did. Now th this is the one I'm really curious about. Let's go see. All right guys, this is the round that genuinely impressed me the most with the uh, maximum expansion round. Now this round is designed to go into soft tissue, dump all of its energy, and not pass through. So you don't get you know, any type of collateral damage. Now, if it hits soft tissue, of course that hydraulic uh, factor from that, that tissue going in there and it just wham, opens up dumps all its energy and creates this big menacing looking projectile. But when it hits a hard surface, it collapsed and made kind of like a, a flat point. 
So then it almost cut through this gel like a wad cutter. Now you still got a really nice um, permanent cavity that almost mirrored the other round that we just shot just fine. All right, passed through a full 16 inches, caught it in exactly the same spot, and you can see the pedals kind of close together instead of expanding apart. You got 100% weight retention, and it worked almost like a wad cutter would work. All right, so that, that round did its job because it did not hit a soft tissue, you know, just without the barrier. So that's really interesting to see that result. So what we're gonna do, we saw that the auto glass is a very unique situation because what auto glass shows us is that you don't always know what type of situation you're gonna be in. You might have to shoot at someone through glass. And it's nice to know that whatever round you have in your gun, it's gonna shoot through the glass and, and like knowing that, you know, say that you went with like a traditional like highly frangible round or you went with a traditional like mag safe or something like that, that round would likely quickly disintegrate and choke up going through a hard barrier like this and wouldn't be effective when it got to the other side. This round gives you the best of both worlds by being able to penetrate and still carry through and you still don't want to get shot with that. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, we're going to step up to some drywall, some plywood. I've got some other cool things, so stick around. Uh, we're just getting started today. All right, guys, I know what you're thinking. You're sitting in your living room, minding your own business, watching Jeopardy with the family. Everybody's confused. They don't know what's going on. And if all of a sudden you hear somebody trying to beat your front door down. So what we've done here is we've set up three quarter inch plywood. We're gonna try one of the um, maximum expansion rounds, 174 grain, moving at 1,000 feet per second. Shoot through this barrier just to see what would happen if you shoot through three quarter inch plywood and see what it would do to a standard FBI ballistics gel block with denim, four layers of denim. Let's go ahead and do that now. In three, two, one. All right, let's have a look, see what happened. All right, guys, well, civil unrest, you know, something going on, you gotta shoot through, I don't know, plywood or some type of a barrier. That little round certainly did its job. It went through three quarter inch plywood, through four layers of denim, through a standard FBI uh, ballistic shell block and penetrated 11 and a half inches. Bullet retained all of its weight right there, right in the block, dead center, just like we wanted to do. Uh, it did get turned around, but bear in mind that this type of projectile does really, really well for less pass through. You know, anytime that bullet starts to get larger, it's always going to slow it down in the, in, the, uh, in the cavity or slow it down in the intended uh, subject matter when you shoot them or whatever. It's going to do that. But it, now if that bullet had expanded, you know, without being hitting a, a barrier or anything like that, it would open up really, really wide and it would stop in eh, around 10 inches, 9 inches worth of uh, gelatin. Uh, with just a straight dead on shot. So that's good to know that your penetrating capability is gonna be very similar and you still get 100% weight retention regardless of what the barrier is doing for you there. So that, that's a very interesting result. All right guys, so you're hanging out with your family, you're watching Walking Dead and all of a sudden a zombie starts beating at the front door. You gotta get through, make sure that round's gonna punch through the door and kill the zombie. So three quarter inch plywood again, this time we're gonna use control fracturing, 170 grain, thousand feet per second, plus P, Lehigh. This is the one that breaks off, has little pedals that disperse and create their own wound channels. I'm really curious to see how this does through a barrier. So let's give it a try. In three, two, one. Might have favored a little bit low, but let's have a look. All right, guys, well, I'm really impressed with the result that we got with these various offerings. Now we are gonna shoot some other loads, but first I'm gonna use my eyeball pluckers here. Control fracturing in the plus P, running at 1,000 feet per second, it shed the base and the base penetra penetrated through to about 11 inches. All right, you can see here, one of these pedals dropped off. There's actually three of them total that shear off and create their own wound pattern. But you can see here that into this ballistic shell block, that's about six inches. So you've got roughly about a six inch uh, circumference between the permanent cavity and where those pellets create their own wound tracks. The base pushes through and still does what it needs to do to get through and penetrate and then you got your in, uh, individual wound tracks and that's after punching a three quarter uh, inch piece of plywood and then four layers of denim. So that's a pretty interesting result. We're gonna move on though. I wanna give everybody a fair chance. So we're gonna try out a couple of different loadings in the same block just to, just to see what they do. Let's get after it. All right guys, we're gonna shoot the same exact test but this time we're gonna use the Federal HST and we're gonna try out the Hornady uh, critical duty 
go ahead and give these two a try. I'm gonna shoot them uh, both in rapid succession, back to back, and then let's go have a look. In three, two, one. All right, let's have a look, see if we captured our projectiles. All right, guys, well, both of those rounds carry through a uh, complete straight line, baseline expansion, pretty much what we expected. I mean, anytime you're talking about, you know, 45 ball, it's going to punch through pretty well for the most part. And uh, we see here that we got the uh, Federal HST did not expand at all, okay? With the Federal HST, the nose of the uh, projectile was clogged up with a uh, uh, medium from the board and it did not expand although it did penetrate uh, but it didn't expand okay our hornady critical duty tried to expand a little bit and you've got a little bit of a cavity going on there that you know it didn't it, it filled up with material just failed to expand like it was designed to do and then uh, comparing it to our maximum expansion lehigh that we shot earlier you can see there's a considerable amount of difference there in the expansion between the lehigh uh, to the Hornady. And of course the Federal just kind of choked up, uh, which is funny because the Federal uh, offering is, you know, touted as being a barrier penetrator or barrier blind uh, type projectile. So that's a very interesting uh, showcase uh, to see what those uh, various rounds will do. What we're going to do now though is we're, we're going to replicate an interior uh, setting like you're shooting through uh, interior walls and usually those consist of like drywall. So we're going to set up some chunks of drywall and perform the same exact test again. Uh, we'll try to pick up the pace. You'll think you guys get the idea here. And of course, uh, all of those projectiles through four layers of denim as well, three quarter inch plywood. So very interesting experiment, but let's move on. All right, guys, we've already ran through a couple of batteries of tests here. We did the windshield test. We did the plywood test. Now we're gonna step up to uh, two sheets of drywall, standard uh, interior, half inch drywall, pretty standard fare. We're gonna start out with our maximum expansion plus P round. This one's 174 grains. It's moving a thousand feet per second. In three, two, one. All right, let's go have a look. All right, guys, well, the drywall didn't really offer a lot of resistance as we kind of figured. Uh, four layers of denim punched all the way through this 16-inch uh, FBI gel block. Looks like we got some expansion. Um, it carried some of the denim through all the way through up to about, well, that's probably about 14 inches almost that it carried that denim through, which is really cool. So we're gonna look through our, oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> so it does appear that the projectile did get choked up by the drywall, which you know, drywall is a, is a really nasty medium for hollow points because it, it acts you know, almost like the reversal of like some type of a powdered metal projectile, how they, they just rapidly you know, lose all of their energy and they're really, really frangible. It's kind of the exact opposite though. When a bullet passes through drywall, there's, it's just this caked, caked up, crushed medium that's in there. And it just, it can really play hell on a lot of these uh, various hollow points uh, that are out there. But it really did cause a very nasty permanent cavity that you certainly would still not want to get hit by. All right, guys, well, that first run certainly wasn't bad. We're gonna move on to try the control fracturing. It's a 170 grain projectile moving 1,000 feet per second, uh, just like we stated for, uh, before, plus P range. It's got the little uh, pedals that break off. Really, really cool. Let's give it a try. In three, two, one. Oh yeah, that slammed it. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and shoot a baseline for the Federal HST and for the Hornady uh, Critical Duty. We're gonna have a look how they stack up against two layers of drywall. Let's get to it. First is the Hornady, then the Federal. In three, two, one. We'll see what happens. So we can see that all the rounds we fired here, they choked up in the drywall and, and that's to be expected. You know, drywall is a very odd medium and it, it really just plays hell on an open cavity bullet like that. So we kind of expected that result out of all the projectiles. All right, guys, at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna showcase what we feel some of these Lehigh offerings lend themselves best to do. All right, the maximum expansion type bullet, what it's going to do is it's going to prevent pass through. All right, so what we've set up here is a home defense scenario. Let's say the bad guys right here. All right, we got our little jail baby on the other side. This is our little baby, okay? We got two uh, layers of sheetrock. So what we wanna see is if you shot the bad guy and your baby's on the other side, would the bullet go through the bad guy through the wall and hit 
little junior on the other side who's just trying to enjoy some milk or whatever, okay? Let's try it, all right? Let's see what happens. All right, guys, what we wanna do is we wanna show exactly what type of situation certain projectiles would be best suited for. So with Lehigh, we got the 174 grain uh, maximum expansion, and this bullet is wicked, it's moving 1,000 feet per second. We're gonna have very limited pass-through. We got our little uh, gel baby on the other side of the drywall. Let's see if that baby is gonna be safe after I shoot this perp here. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. All right, I think we got a result. Let's go have a look. All right, guys, what well, looks like a little gel baby safe and sound for today. Uh, we didn't even damage the walls. Well, we might've got some blood and gore on the walls, but that's besides the point. We got uh, about seven and a half inches of penetration out of that guy, 100% weight retention. And I'm gonna grab my eyeball pluckers here and pull this projectile out and show you just how impressive this thing really is. This is my favorite part, by the way. All right, so there's our projectile and you see the diameter in terms of the expansion of that thing. Let me grab the calipers here. 1.31, okay, so that is an extreme amount of expansion. I mean, remember this started out as a 45 caliber pill and then ended up 1.31 inches. So that's an extreme amount of, uh, of expansion, not to mention our uh, permanent cavity is very scary looking. I, I can't imagine what that wound would actually look like in a real human being or anything like that. Now bear in mind, we would have probably got a little bit more penetration, but we did shoot through four layers of denim. So that's FBI standards. You always wanna make sure you're using denim because uh, bad guys don't run around naked, of course. Uh, we're gonna set up one other test. This was very interesting. I, I learned a little bit from this but I can think of something else, you know. Lehigh also makes their Extreme Penetrator, and I think I've got an idea that I think you guys are gonna really like. All right, guys, we've got another scenario set up here. So let's say you're in your house, some guy starts shooting at you through the wall, he's trying to kill you, whatever. You got your drywall. You know, we got a little uh, three-quarter inch uh, piece of plywood here, you know, just to add some resistance. You know, a chair. So say you end up on your back, you're shooting back at the guy, you know where he's at. So would this extreme penetrating 200 grain uh, Lehigh ball go all the way through this stuff? You're shooting through furniture, you're shooting through walls, and get to the bad guy on the other side of the uh, wall. So this is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. This is you want the projectile to punch through a bunch of stuff and get to the other side and cause, you know, to get through and cause damage as much as possible on the other side of all of your barriers. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump a whole mag out of my little Smith here. We got a bunch of them, they're running 950 feet per second plus P. This is gonna be fun. All right guys, I'm gonna to proceed to launch a bunch of these extreme penetrators into this, uh, in our little home defense scenario here out of my little Smith & Wesson M&P. Nine shots, here we go, movie style. In three, two, one. All right, we'll see what happened. All right guys, well, we can see that those extreme penetrating rounds don't play around. They don't call them that for nothing. I mean, it punched through the chair, through the three quarter inch plywood, taking a whole bunch of fluff and everything with it, through the drywall, through the other piece of drywall. And then this one round, we got one nice capture. It carried all the way through 16 inches of ballistics jelt. And so guys, it, it, the whole point of this video and what we were trying to accomplish is that we really wanted to showcase that not all types of ammunition are created equal. Um, there are certain instances, you know, it's one thing to just be at a range and shooting paper and, and, and shooting good groups and practicing with your firearm, but it's also knowing about your carry ammunition and knowing, you know, what different projectiles will do in different situations. You know, what happens when you shoot through a windshield? What happens when you shoot through plywood, through drywall, through things in your home? Uh, we're going to be expanding this concept greatly in the future. Um, this is just kind of scratching the surface on the type of things that I want to test personally. Um, hopefully you learned something from this video. Uh, we really had a lot of fun making it. Thanks for sticking around. We'll catch you guys next time.